I genuinely have no idea what my job is. I think I would say I'm a writer because that's the thing I do that's difficult. Because playing poker is fun and making TV can have long hours, but it's sort of easy. And writing is the bit that, you know, I wake up in the morning and think, oh God, it's a writing day. So that's the thing I'd call a job. My father was a writer and my mother was a doctor. So a fairly straightforward and middle-class childhood, except my dad was sometimes on TV, which I suppose is weird, although it didn't seem weird to me at the time. I just thought that's what people did. Professionally, I'm sure I was influenced by my father. I mean, I think a lot of people want to be writers or dream of being writers. I think the problem is they don't think it's possible. People wonder sometimes, they say, oh, is it easy for you if you have a famous parent or a parent who does the same job? The advantage is really that you think it's possible. As soon as I was writing, it was sort of professionally. I wrote a newspaper that I sold at school for 10p. It was a newspaper with sort of sort of fake news about girls at school. And I think it cost me 6p to make each copy and I sold it for 10. So I was making 4p a copy. Uh, very entrepreneurial. When I was about 12, 13, I used to send off short stories to magazines under a fake name and had some of them published. The first story I had published, I remember getting the letter, you know, and it was written obviously to my fake name. This letter came and my parents were like, who's that? And I, I'll take that, thank you very much. It says, uh, thank you for your short story. It's a bit rough in places and needs a bit of a rewrite, but we'd like to buy it at our usual rate of 90 pounds, which was incredibly exciting. You know, these days I'd immediately be suspicious because they said they wanted to rewrite it. But then, you know, I was 13. I thought, oh, I'm having a story published and, uh, and uh, I'm going to get 90 pounds, which is more money than there was in the world at that time. And then I decided to, to put my real name on. I thought, right, if it's actually going to be in there, I want it to have my name. And there was a short story with my name on, and it felt very sort of old-fashioned and romantic and, and, and like an old film, you know, where someone gets a story published. It was amazing. Writing columns is probably the trickiest way of doing journalism. I've done interviews, which are fun to write up, and features. Columns are difficult because, you know, you have to generate opinions all the time, and especially these days, you get stick for them. When I find a story that makes me angry or that I think is funny or that I have an opinion about, that's what I write about. I do a big project, you know, every maybe three or four years, I'd write a book, you know, I've done a couple of books. I did a play one time and I took it to the Edinburgh Festival and then put it on in London. And then it got bought for TV, so I wrote it as a TV play. And then <laughs> I had a sort of adventure with my friend Charlie. We had a sort of comedy job as porn film reviewers on a magazine. What we did was they'd send us these X-rated videos and we would review them as though they were proper films. So we would talk about plot and character and say, you know, I just, I found the character of the plumber, you know, wasn't as convincing as he might have been. And, you know, his trousers came off a little early in the scene. So we came to feel we could make a better film than these ones we were reviewing. So we thought, well, let's put that to the test. Let's go and make an adult film, which we did. And, you know, I think I'm fairly safe in saying it's the worst porn film of all time. Script-wise, it's strong. It doesn't really have any sex in it. That's where we fell down. We were so embarrassed. We were forever saying, I don't think you need to go further than that. Let's all have a cup of tea and a Kit Kat. We spent uh, two or three years in this project and we wrote a book, which... I am quite proud of. I think the book succeeds in its aims more than the film does. And then I've written a book about my life playing poker. The place of poker in my weird life sort of changes all the time. I mean, it was always a hobby and I think it still is one. I just no longer really go and play small tournaments to unwind because I play big tournaments and they can come with their own sort of pressure. I still have a home game every Tuesday in my house, small stakes, old friends. It's still a hobby, but it takes up more of the time and accounts for more of my income, I guess. It was interesting, I won the EPT London in 2006. Show six, seven, she flopped on that straight. And that felt like a story arc. I thought, okay, I can see the shape of it because I started playing poker, you know, as a teenager around the kitchen table for, you know, a few quid with my brother's friends. And 20 years later, I've won a million dollars in this sort of record-breaking tournament, and there's all this press about it. And I could see that's a journey. 
and I wanted to get into the book, you know, my life, the truth of the people I know that I've played with, the game of poker itself, all the stuff I wanted to do. So it was kind of daunting as an idea. But once I started, it wrote itself. I had 20 years of funny stories and weird stories and sinister moments and amazing highs of, of winning lots of money and sort of terrible nights of being stuck in Vegas, kind of broke, trying to figure out how to get my hands on a, a few quid to pay the hotel bill. And as is true of any story that you're really meant to write, it, it was just easy. It just, you hold the pen or, you know, put your fingers on the keyboard and, and there it is. I think it must be a sign that my TV career is the thing I care about least, because I don't remember it very well. I remembered the writing stuff and the poker, but, you know, I presented a few series of late night poker, I did commentary on TV, and I do this quiz, Only Connect. I think it's a brilliant quiz. I think it requires detective work like poker does. It's quite like that. It's that part of the brain, the sort of working out, but only you have to do it really against the clock. And it's like a, a poker game where you always have a minute and a half to, to make every decision, which is a great idea for a poker tournament, by the way. The presenting of it is quite fun. I mean, obviously, I get sent the questions in advance. You know, they're not a surprise to me. And I always play it as a quiz. You know, I get the scripts and, you know, I play them. I normally score pretty well. But the show, it gets harder as the series progresses. So by the time I'm looking at the questions for the final, I'm usually just giggling. I don't know what they mean. I'm making a documentary this winter. I haven't done a documentary for a while, actually. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's about P.L. Travers, the author of Mary Poppins. It's coming up to 50 years since the film of Mary Poppins was made, and I'm hoping that the film we make will be about, partly about her amazing life and telling people about her, because she was a very, very interesting woman, but also looking at the difference between books and film, because P.L. Travers hated the film of Mary Poppins. She thought it was a travesty of the books that she'd written. I was a huge fan of the books as a kid, and I'm very sympathetic to everything she did to try to really stop that film getting made. The thing with documentaries is I get asked, I would say, between two and five times a fortnight if I want to make a documentary about poker or gambling. That's top of the list. Do you want to make a documentary about gambling is top. And the second one is always gaining and losing weight. It's amazing. That's probably twice a month. Either will you gain a lot of weight to see what it's like to be very fat or will you lose a lot of weight to see what it's like to be very thin. It's amazing how many times I get off of that. I'm not interested. I want to keep eating exactly the same number of donuts as I always have. It's something that people ask you quite a lot. You are either in poker or out of it. What are you hoping to achieve next? What do you want to win? What do you want to do? I never really think like that. I don't have a sort of game plan. I don't think I want to be the world champion. I want to win the Booker Prize. I want to host a variety show. It's probably very much a jack of all trades and mistress of none, but I don't want to stop doing any of them. So, you know, I think I want to have another year doing the things I like doing, trying to be a bit useful and, uh, you know, pay the mortgage. Uh, maybe I should have bigger goals, but I think small, small, little goals. <laughs>